welcome to the arena of the supernatural where supernatural is always natural these are the days of glory today we are having dr basil tryon my papa papa bishop basil tryon he's going to minister to you he's an apostle of finances apostle of economy apostle whom god has used to build buildings of millions i'm telling you he's a man of faith when he speaks he transferred the grace the anointing that is upon his life and i know it will impact your life it has impacted my life too <laughs> i'm telling you he's the man he's the anointed man of god that is going to transform your life receive as he come in jesus name please don't forget to like us and to share in the page and to subscribe to our channel on youtube and i'm telling you your life will never be the same again it's your time for you to be blessed and to be transformed let the glory hit you wherever you are. You will never be the same again. May God bless you. See you tomorrow. Remember, 6 o'clock in the morning, there is a repeat. May God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Msomi and Mom Somi, Apostle and Prophetess. We are so blessed to be here with you. We are proud of you, and you are doing a great, great work. Greetings to every one of you. And thank you also for the team that travels with me and looks after me. Praise the Lord. I'm getting younger and younger, stronger and stronger. Watch this space. You are coming through in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand and take your seat. Thank you. You may be seated. I bring greetings to you from Ma'an and the home church and all the relating churches. And uh, they're all praying for you. And this is going to be, next year will be the greatest year of your whole life. We believe that. We are preparing for that in the name of Jesus. I love the song that you have sang. Wow. The light is shining brighter and brighter unto that glorious day. I want to read a portion of scripture to you as we feast on the word of God on Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 to verse 9. The book of Haggai chapter 2 and verse 6 to verse 9. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once... It is a little while that I shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord for his word. In the New Testament... Paul says everything that can be shaken is being shaken. And we receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us serve God with reverence and holy fear. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are living in the times of greatest shaking. There isn't a country in the world that is not experiencing shakings of some sort the purpose of the shaking when i was young much younger going to school sometimes we couldn't climb the tree in the farms to get the the fruit and we will shake the tree when you shake the tree the fruit falls and so the fruit is in the wrong hands. The money is in the wrong hands. 
And God is shaking the nations. Amen. Now I want you to take note what he is shaking here. He says, number one, he will shake the heavens. Then he'll shake the earth. He'll shake the sea. He'll shake the dry land. And then he's going to shake people. He'll shake nations. And so we need to understand these four areas of shaking uh, because God says he's going to fill this house with glory. Right in the middle of that, God says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. It gives us an understanding that with the glory filling the house in the middle of the shaking, that there's going to be a great transfer of wealth in this glory. Amen. In fact, the first time, give him a hand, hallelujah. The first time the word glory is mentioned, it speaks to us of financial wealth. That Jacob got all this glory from Laban, who was an ungodly man, who was actually his father-in-law. And his son says, they heard him, the son say, all this glory he has got from our father. And so it's telling us that there's a transfer of wealth that is coming with the glory of God. Now the glory of God is something so beautiful in the Bible. It's, some, it's a truth that goes throughout the Bible. When God created man, my Bible tells me that they were naked, Adam and Eve, and they were unashamed. Everything that God has created, animals, the birds, the insects, all have their covering from within. When God created man, he never created man with a covering from without. The glory of God was the covering or the clothing of man. But my Bible tells me that when, they, when man sinned, Romans 3.23 they fell short of that glory. And then they realized that they were naked. And that's where you have the introduction of clothing that came in. And they sewed fig leaves together so they could cover up their nakedness. All down through the years, man has been trying to cover up his nakedness. Until Jesus Christ came to cover up our nakedness with his righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says we are made right with God through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ comes into your heart, he comes back into your heart with glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One has to ask the question, what is glory? What is glory? Glory is the intrinsic value of God. It is the worth and the value of God. Glory has been designed by God that it should come from within you and come out. In the Bible... The Bible tells us about Jesus Christ, that he took Peter, James, and John, and he went up to a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured before them. He was transformed. And the way he was transformed, it happened from within him to show us how this glory can come out of you. Because God's plan and God's purpose is that, first of all, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Then God, out of that knowledge of the glory of God, 
because the word of God is filled with the glory of God. Then the glory of the Lord, God said in the book of Numbers, as truly as I live, the glory of the Lord will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. And so God has always designed, first of all, that his glory will fill our lives, that we will be the ox of God. We will carry the presence of God. But out of us, that glory will come out of us and fill the earth and cover the earth. Now, what is the glory of God? Moses said to God, if you don't go with us, we will not go. And God says, my presence will go with you. So first of all, the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. Now we know with men and women, if somebody comes into a room, there's an aura that comes out of that person to show that their presence is there. People sometimes have a negative aura. Then some people have a positive aura. You will find people of God that are greatly used of God. When they come into a room, the very atmosphere begins to change. So this transformation, it means there's going to be a change on the inside. Then it's a transfiguration. It's the same word as transformation. It means you'll get transfigured to be that glory. You will represent that glory. It's the glory of God. There's something that comes out of God called glory. Now, this glory of God is in different measures. It can be measured. In fact, the word kabod, the word glory means the weight, meaning there's different weights of the presence of God. You know, just by observation, we come into meetings when we worship God. They sometimes the glory is so heavy. It's like you can just reach out and touch it. But then sometimes it's not so heavy. So we understand that there are different weights, different levels of manifestation of the glory of God. The first definition you can say is that the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. Now Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't take us anywhere. We're going to, in the year 2020, we're not going anywhere without the presence of God. We got to understand we need the presence of God in the time of shaking like never before. And yeah, we read this morning that the heavens will be shaken. Why? There are some things in the heavenly realm like principalities and powers that need to be dethroned. Principalities and powers actually rule different regions. And so when you go into different regions and sometimes different countries, you can sense what principality and power is over that country or over that region, and you see the manifestation of that principality and power in the, in the people's lives, the way they come out. For example, you can go into an area where there's a pr principality of poverty. Or there's a principality of sickness and disease. Or principalities of crime. There's all different types of wicked principalities. And those principalities are rulers over the people. And so God is saying in this time of this dispensation of the glory of God. Because the glory of God is the goal of creation. There is nothing greater than the glory of God. And so God is shaking the principalities. 
and the principalities being shaken, they're going to lose their control over the regions. So we understand. Yeah, give him a hand. Hallelujah. We understand that, as I said, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the gospel of the glory of God. When God said in the word, the very second verse in Genesis, let there be light. It was because the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. It was before the sun was created, before the moon was created, before the stars were put into space. But he said, let there be light, and there was light. Now the universe is still expanding at the speed of light until today. And so God released his glory. He released his presence you see, friends, God is omnipresent. There isn't any way in the face of the earth that you won't find God. God is all over at the same time, but he's not manifest all over at the same time. When he's manifest, he lets his presence be realized by people. And that's what God wants. He wants his presence to be manifest. And we are a crucial to God for the manifestation of the presence of God. And so he shakes principalities. He shakes the heavens. Then he shakes the earth. That's what he says. He's going to shake the earth. Why? Why is he shaking the earth? Because there's wealth in the earth, hidden treasures in darkness. There's much wealth that has been discovered. But there is so much wealth that hasn't been discovered. And so there's a whole lot of shaking going on because there's some things we've got to discover. He's going to give us witty inventions. The creativity of Elohim is going to come upon his people. And we're going to bring things out of the earth that are going to cause tremendous wealth transfer. So the first area is principalities and powers will be dethroned. Secondly, the earth is going to want to serve you the wealth of the earth. Because the whole of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Then he's going to shake the sea. He's going to shake the sea. You know how much wealth is in the sea? He's going to shake the sea. You look at the ships. You know how much wealth is being transported by the ships in the sea? And so God wants us to take over the seas. You've got to take it over. You've got to take over the atmosphere. You've got to take over the earth is yours. And you've got to take over the waters. The sea is yours. Hallelujah. So we're going to have to learn how to exercise our authority over the seas as the shaking begins to take place. And then he's going to shake the dry land. So the heavens, the earth, the sea, the dry land. And number five, he's going to shake nations. So not just South Africa, not just Africa, but America is experiencing shakings. Europe is experiencing shakings. We're living in a time that you won't be able. Canada is experiencing shakings. There's shakings going on all over. Now, it's God who's causing these shakings because he's ushering in a new dispensation. And so he's shaking things up. Hallelujah. He's shaking it up. We are Kofu Salento. Hallelujah. We are Nagazi Salento. Hallelujah. 
that something is going to come out. You got some money that must be shaken to you. You got some jobs that must be shaken to you. You got some motor cars that must be shaken to you. You got some houses that are going to be shaken off ownership of other people and let us be shaken unto you in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. And he's going to shake nations, global wealth transfer. You're going to supply solutions to nations. Your company can go. God wants it to go and grow global. Hallelujah. Supernaturally. Things are going to happen supernaturally. Your professional people here in Mount, Car Mount Zion is going to get global jobs, global companies that's going to pay you in euros and in dollars in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. This is your season. This is your time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to shake it all. Then he says, in case you think the glory doesn't involve wealth, he says, the silver is mine, yes. and the gold is mine. Yes. And then he uses the term, says the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, uh, of host, means the host is a war word. Yes. It's, it's Jehovah of the angel armies. So he's going, he's doing these shakings with the armies of heaven. Amen. You may not see them, but he's shaking things up. And so we, our position has got to be on that which is unshakable. It's the word of God that is unshakable. Everything is changing. Change is the only constant thing we have. But Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is not a man. He does not change. And his word does not change. And so we must stand on that which is unshakable. Hallelujah. Because if you stand on that which is unshakable, then you're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. The kingdom of God cannot be shaken. In the year 2020, you got to make your dwelling place in that which is unshakable. That is which is unchangeable. Hallelujah. You're going to live and move and have your being in Christ. And everything is being shaken that it may come into Christ so that there's a gathering together of all things both in heaven and in earth, even in him. And the angel armies of the Lord is causing these shakings. So God wants you to know that he says in verse 7, he'll fill this house with glory. In fact, before that, he says, I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations will come. The desire of all nations means the wealth of all nations. It's just not what they want. They want wealth, and they'll bring their wealth in the midst of the shaking. Hallelujah. Amen. So the shaking is not a bad thing. The shaking is a good thing. You must understand that. Because in Hebrews it says that the shaking is a promise. So one of the promises of God, he's going to shake everything that can be shaken. So we mustn't be alarmed when you see these shakings going on. It's for a far greater purpose, and it's not for your destruction. So he's shaking everything, and he says in the midst of these shaking, there's going to, one translation says, bushels of wealth will come into the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Years ago, I went to Davidston and I preached there 
in a p apostle whose church was that now? Um, I forget his name, but it was a township church, a big church, and um, he was the post uh, apostle of uh, the church in uh, Amlaz. Stolle, uh, Apostle Stolle, as uh, church. And that morning, when I was traveling there, I was in Johannesburg, and he sent someone to pick me up. And the Lord said, I must talk about Amazos. Not that I heard a, a word, an audible voice, but just came up within me. And I started talking to the driver to find out, I knew a little bit about the worship of ancestral worship. And uh, so I knew that the worship of ancestral is that you, you want them to bless you. That's the main purpose of it. You want them to bless you. And I sense the Lord saying that the Holy Spirit is our ancestor. Because when you worship the ancestors, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's no one besides Jesus Christ who didn't sin. So they are limited to bless us. But though Jesus Christ came to pay the price for our sin, and when he died and he rose again by the Spirit, and he received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and he poured out the Holy Ghost. And so the, the Spirit of Jesus, the presence of Jesus, is our ancestral spirit. As kolwe amalozi si kolwa izlozi yetu. Izlozi yetu umoya wa Jesu. And so we don't go to the graveyard to bring the dead up. We lift our hands and the Holy Ghost comes to us from heaven. And that is the blessing of Abraham that comes upon the Gentiles. It's because Jesus died and rose again and received the spirit that blesses us to come upon us in the name of Jesus. And it was such a wonderful meeting because I was sharing with that church, they got a few thousand people, eh? and uh, that the concept of Amazlos is a deposit of God in the culture. It's not that it's an ungodly thing, but because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it was sidetracked in that way. But there is a place in God where God is called the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. So that on one level, your forefathers do release a blessing unto you as well if they were saved and, and they were serving the Lord. So the concept is a deposit of God, but because of sin, it can't actually work. And so there was such a, a gratitude that flowed out of the people's hearts to know that, you know, Western civilization tries to make it look like everything Africa does is wrong. Like there's no God in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more manifestations of God in Africa than anywhere in the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. Africa is no more the dark continent. Africa is a continent of light in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we just need to, to adjust that concept and understand the Holy Spirit or the spirit of glory will come gushing through with a blessing upon our lives. So when you come to service together like this, you must know this is Rosietu is going to bless us. Yeah. Don't take away from your culture that which has been deposited by God. 
because it's been given to us by God. African culture is one of the finest cultures I've ever met, seen in the whole world. It's got respect, got honor, and the Western civilization, they, they don't have those things in your culture. Don't throw your culture away. But your culture needs to be cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why when I hear you singing and dancing, how beautiful is that? That's not an expression of... of <laughs> but I saw African culture worshipping God. Wasn't it beautiful, Baba? Dadan, God, you know, they got cool. Born a leon, they puma, they puma, they puma. When? Baba, Africa will be saved. Hallelujah! And glory of God is going to fill this land. And you are awesome. Give yourself a big hand. Hallelujah! So, so number one. The manifestation of the heavy presence of God is the kabad of God. It's the glory of God. And when you sing, when the prophetess sings, when the apostle sings on the stage, there is an anointing. I can sense here this morning, there is a cloud over you all just gathering you all together it is the glory of the Lord. It's the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. It comes upon the people of God. So number one, the glory of the Lord is the presence of God. Then Moses said to God, even though God said, my presence will go with you. Uh, Moses says, if your presence won't go with us, we're not going nowhere. In other words, they got to a place where they said, like you and I, we're going nowhere if we can't have the presence of our God. 2020, we're coming into it with the presence of God. We are the carriers of the presence of God. We are the ox of God. Hallelujah. And that presence is going to manifest in dark places. Then Moses says something, show me your glory. Show me your glory. And that was a prayer. He says, I beseech you. He says, show me your glory. Now, you can immediately think, didn't Moses know the glory? No, Moses knew the glory. Why? Because the glory of God was there in Egypt. It separated Goshen and the Egyptians by a wall. It was the glory of God in the wilderness. The glory of God was a pillar of fire in the night. The glory of God was a cloud in the day. In fact, the, they called the glory of God the Shekinah glory of God. It was shining, this glory of God. It was glistening. But it was not glistening from the sun. It was glistening from the Son of God. Because the glory of God is Jesus Christ. In Hebrews, the Bible says, He is the brightness of of God's glory. So the, the glory of God is Jesus Christ. And so sometimes in the temple, they couldn't go into the temple because the glory of God was by the gateway and it, it stopped them from coming into the temple. And then at times the glory of God would fill the house. And the Bible says the priests could not stand and minister. That means the glory took over. We see this in one of the prophets say, God was like a fire from his waist upwards and from his waist downward. God, when he came upon Mount Sinai, he came onto a mountain with fire and smoke. Now, we don't look for a mountain anymore. We are those mountains. We are those mountains that, that are getting filled with the fire of God and the smoke of God and the clouds of God. Hallelujah. In the day of Pentecost, when they were all 
in one place, in one accord. The Bible says there came a sound from heaven. 2020, you're going to get some sounds from heaven. Uh, 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 it was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. It, it wasn't the wind. It says it was a sound likened to the wind. They did not know how to explain the sound, but it was rushing. I've heard sounds of mighty winds uh, that blow. I live on the coast of the sea, and sometimes the wind whistles and blows. And, and it can be quite frightening. But the Bible says this wind, the sound, it came like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole room. My God, filled the room. So they, they knew that God had filled the room. And then the Bible says, they appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. Not matchstick flames, pillies, <laughs> fire, and sat upon their head. Sat on the head. Because you God's throne, you Jesus. You're the sitting place of God. And, and, and then the Bible says, then they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So this presence that came in, this fire that they saw, the sound, that was heard, filled their lives. And then they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then they, the people heard them in the streets. They said, these people are drunk with wine. <laughs> you see, there's a, the Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. But it's speaking to us that you see, when a drunk person gets drunk with alcohol, they loosen up. And they, they're not in control of themselves anymore. But when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not Cain's Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills you. The Holy Spirit will loosen you up. I looked at that young lady singing here. Look at mom singing there. My God, there's nothing, no inhibitions, no worrying about what this one thinks or that one thinks. We, we were singing under the anointing. You get loosened up and you couldn't care what people think about you. You only caught up in God. You caught up in serving God and giving yourself to God completely. And then Peter stood up. With the other eleven standing too. So these are not drunk with wine as you, are, as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days God says, I'll pour out me. <laughs> I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men, they're going to dream visions and dreams of heaven. Hallelujah. So it means there's an intensity of a heavenly realm that God's got planned for us on this earth. Hallelujah. So back to the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus revealed his glory. Now the Bible says... His face began to shine like the sun. Now, it wasn't glory coming from outside to him. It was glory coming from inside through his flesh that caused his face to shine. Then when they looked at his clothing, they didn't know to, uh, couldn't explain about what's happening on the clothing. The only thing they could say is his clothing is like shining like the light. That means it was shining glory, shining through his flesh, even shining through his clothing. 
Where you're going, even your shadow will heal people. Your clothing, they'll just touch you and, and that glory will be transmitted unto them. People will, you'll just greet somebody like how Mary greeted Elizabeth and, and, she was, and John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. And so this is where we're going to is glorification. Now, something happened to show you that glorification causes a convergence of heaven into the earth. Then they saw Moses. Aibo. Is Rosia Moses? And Elijah. Aibo. Abantu abamugile babu yabazokuluma no jes. On a mount of transfiguration. And then they heard God speaking, and this is what God said, this is my beloved son, hear you him. So what happened there? It's like the veil of the flesh was opened up. And when the veil of the flesh gets opened up, heaven's glory comes into the earth. And Jesus was showing them, was an example of what's going to happen to us in this glorification. It's not just written in there to be a nice story. It's written in there so we can prepare for this in the name of Jesus. There's bright days ahead of us. It's not getting worse and worse. It's getting better and better. It's getting brighter and brighter. Your best days are just in front of you. They're so close, it'll give you a fright if you can see it. The only thing that is stopping you from seeing it, inyam. But once the glory begins to quicken your mortal body, because the Bible says if the spirit, Romans 8 and verse 11, if the spirit, the spirit of glory that raised Jesus from the dead, Dwell in your mortal body. And your man. That spirit will quicken your mortal body. So it's not only going to be in your spirit. It's not only going to be in your mind. It's going to be through your flesh. The anointing is going to come and pour it out on all flesh. And all flesh will see the glory of God. When the glory of God is upon you. And flowing through you, you'll never be able to be hid. You'll just be thrust into the public, for the public to see. I, mtana wankulunkululo, indota ne yankulunkululo, and and they will know that this is the seed that the Lord has blessed. And so this is where we're going to. I want you to prepare. Mount Carnation, prepare. Amen. 2020 is going to be the greatest year the church by and large has ever known. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So he says he's going to fill this house with glory. And the desire of all nations will come. That means the nations are going to come into the church with bushels of wealth. Because God's plan is to make poverty history. The anointing, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. It's the first people that Jesus said he's anointed to preach. And why is he preaching good news to the poor? Because the poor don't have to be poor anymore. I'm, I'm letting you know today, your days of poverty are over. Yeah. You're serving sentence to this principality over in and over wherever you're living. You are not under that principality. You are under Jesus Christ and there's a glory cloud of prosperity that's over your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus, give him a big hand. Hallelujah. 
then God says, uh, the silver and gold is mine. In case you thought, umoya palace kulumangai. No, skulumanange mali manch. Unkulunguluti yonke le malen saben e yami. Matabangi kuti imali yabantu. Imali ankulunkulu. All the wealth belongs to God. Listen to me carefully. Nobody who died ever took money away with them. All the wealth of generations. King David's wealth is still here. <laughs> King Solomon's wealth is still here. You know, Oppenheimer's wealth is still here. <laughs> Mr. Buffett's wealth is still here. All the wealth of the generations gone is all still here and is ready to be distributed. And we are setting, God is setting us up for the greatest distribution of wealth you've ever known. It's time to be on fire for Jesus. It's time to get your life right. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to, to seek God with all your heart. Then he says, this, what, it, what does he mean? The silver and gold is mine. He says, when God puts money in your hand, don't think it's yours. He just makes you a manager. Because when you get to the end of the life, you can't take your car, you can't take your house, you can't take your money. So if you can be a trustworthy steward, you can be a manager. God can tell you. You give God the freedom to tell you, I must bless the church. I must bless my man of God. I must bless my woman of God. I must finance the vision of the church then you, a, a faithful steward will actually obey God. You carry out God's instructions. Why? Because the wealth belongs to God. But if you are a faithful steward, the Bible says a faithful man, a faithful woman shall abound with the blessings of God. You'll have so much wealth for you, you really won't know what to do with it. So this morning in our church, I was looking at the scripture in, in Matthew chapter 6. And as we're going to draw this to a close, and I want to pray for you uh, this morning. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus says, Why take you thought for clothing, raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And then he makes a statement, And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, was not clothed like one of these. What is God saying here? Is he comparing Solomon to flowers? Or is he comparing Solomon to you? So God wants you to know that Solomon's glory was a glory that came out from the outside upon him. Just like uh, Moses. Moses didn't have an inherent glory. He went up into a mountain, Mount Sinai. And he spent 40 days there. And when he came out there, his face was shining. But his face shining, is my, my cloth there. His face shining was the glory that came from outside upon him. Because in the Old Testament, they only know, knew God with them. They met God on the outside of them. That was that time. And because he spent so much time with God on the outside, his face was shining. And that's why when he spoke to the people, he had to put a covering over his face. Why? Because they couldn't look into the glory. That's what God said to Moses. Uh, you see, the law came by Moses. 
mthetho wa figure with Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ and so when Moses said show me my glory show me your glory God says I'm going to let my goodness pass before you so we see now the the glory of God is also the goodness of God there is so much goodness in God that badness cannot stand the goodness of God it just obliterates any badness but he, God said no one can see my face and live and so he says there's a place a cleft in the rock i'm going to put you there and i'm going to pass by you and i'm going to cover you with my hand because you can't look at my face and then he says you'll only be able to see my back part and so he god was saying you'll only be able to see the residue of where i was but you won't be able to see my face and so the glory of god did pass there and 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 god did cover him but in the new testament and i'm drawing this to a close to show you this uh, paul says the new covenant because that's a song that you god gave you uh mom fondes and prophet of god you got a prophet's anointing on you mom got a prophet's anointing i can see it all over her. that is oozing out of her as well and your father is got an apostolic anointing on him pray you are such a blessed people you're blessed people <laughs> hallelujah and this is a blessed house so the bible says that moses covered his face then when you come into the new testament the bible says that we with uncovered faces look into the glory of god and that the glory of god is in the face of jesus christ but we don't look into that glory from the outside like moses because moses only knew god on the outside we now know god on the inside it's christ in us the hope of glory so we do have god with us we have god in us but we also have god for us god is on our side why is he on our side because jesus went and paid the price on the cross of calvary so you can become right with god not because of what you've done or what you haven't done but because of what jesus christ did and your faith in him makes you the righteousness of god so your innocence gets restored the only reason that nobody could look into the face of god is because they were not innocent and if they looked into the face of god they would have died because of sin the face of god would have burnt them up including moses moses had to see the residue of where he was but in the new covenant it shows you how much god restores your innocence Amen. that god comes into you and he says don't you know your body is the temple of the holy spirit of the holy ghost and god says as i have said i will walk in them and i will be their god and they shall be my sons and daughters and so in this new dispensation god comes inside us to make us the temple of god that houses the glory of god and now not like moses when we talk to people we got to cover our face now 
because we're righteous and this glory is coming from inside, it's intrinsic value. It gives value to who you are. Intrinsic value means you are worth now. There's a worth. There's a heaviness of your worth in God. God makes you worthy. God makes you valuable. God loves you the same as he loves Jesus. Not any different. And, and so this glory is in you now. And God wants you in the year 220 to, to get skilled in how to release this glory. And because we don't have time, your father and your mother is going to take you step by step. And we're all going to do it with our people next year. So when we come together, we release this glory. And God says, I will fill this house with glory. And the glory of the latter house, the Bible says, will be greater than the glory of the former house. If you thought that the Old Testament was full of glory, I'm here to tell you the days that we live in are more glorious than the Old Testament. And they had many, many manifestations of God's power. The sea opened up. Water came out of rocks. Meat, quails came out. Uh, food came out from the sky. Bread came out from the sky. The Bible says their clothing didn't wear, get old. There was not one feeble person in their midst. From the youngest to the oldest, they were all whole and healed. And, and that was the glory manifestation. And yet yeah, God is saying, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. So God wants you to expand your thinking, expand your believing. There's better days upon us than even was in the Bible because there is a new covenant glory now in the name of Jesus. And so the new covenant glory is better than the, the old covenant glory. Hallelujah. Don't miss this moment because I'm going to pray for you now. Very soon I'm going to pray for you. Don't allow any distraction to distract you right now. You keep your focus on what God wants to release to you today. And then the old, the old glory, the old house glory, you can also liken it to the book of Acts. And the church in the book of Acts. That is 2,000 years and more ago. Surely 2,000 years later, it is a letter house glory as well. So as I close here today, and I want to pray for you, you understand that every miracle that you read of in the Old Testament, that there's something greater for you than the Old Testament. Yes. Every miracle that you read about, in the new covenant, in the book of Acts, there's something greater for you. And the prophetic word I'm giving you today is that greater days have come upon you. Greater moves have come upon you. Greater glory has come upon you. Greater than Solomon. Greater than David. Greater than any king has come upon you. There's a greater than Solomon is here his name is Jesus. He's the King of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. And he's within you. And he's got, his face is not covered as well. He's smiling at you this morning. And you can look full in his wonderful face. And everything that was holding you back will grow dim in the light of his glory and his grace hallelujah will you lift up your hand as i pray for you and hand the meeting back over